Okay, I thought I'd do a very quick video about these extension tubes that I found. Um, these are for microfluorides, fluids, but you can get them, uh, the same company does them for various different uh, different lens and camera setups. Uh, I'm using it with my um, GH4, so obviously I've got microfluorides. fluids. Uh, companies, is it Yash, Yashuhara uh, Co. Limited? And these are the Nanoha tubes, macro extension tubes. Um, they come as a 16 millimeter and a 10 millimeter set which you can use individually um, or combined so and it, so it goes from 10 millimeter to 16 millimeter and then if you use both of them that's 26 millimeter extension tube uh, they pass through the electrics and so you've got control over your aperture and your focusing uh, fine with the lenses that i've been trying and that's the the 42.5 millimeter noctichron um, which is a fantastic lens and then i've also tried it with the, the sort of panasonic kit lens which is the 14 240 and it works with that fine as long as you're over about 30, 30 millimeter uh, and upwards. Um, the rule of thumb with these, you need to use it with a lens that's basically longer than the the combined length of the extension tube. So if I'm using both of them to get as close as I can, uh, which I am for all of these tests, then it needs to be at least 26 millimeter. So yeah, sort of 30 millimeter lens, but that would be your roughly your optimum um, maximum enlargement sort of lens for these. Uh, they're fairly solid. Um, like I say, they work with the electrics and the focusing and the aperture control. Uh, there's a little bit of a wiggle when I put my big heavy Noctochron on the GH4 with these. There is a little bit of play. Um, it's not like it's going to fall off off the camera or, or tear or let dust in or anything like that. I, I think the seal is fairly good, but there's just a little bit of movement. Um, you know, they're not rock solid, but they are. They feel fairly solid, like I say, in, in the hand, but on the camera, there's a little bit of play. Um, in the connection point. Um, anyway, so here's a bunch of examples. Uh, I will, I'm, I'll film it all in in 4K, uh, and then I'll kind of show you what that looks like at pixel for pixel in 1080. Then I'll pull back to the 4K sort of view, um, field of view, uh, and then I'll show you a quick sort of photograph of each one, just so you can get an idea of, um, you know, what each thing is. Um, and with e with each one of these, I'll put the the focusing point as close as I possibly can, just so you can see what maximum enlargement would be. So let's have a little look through these.
And finally, here's an example of the difference between with and without them uh, on the same lens. So here's as close as I can focus with the 42.5mm uh, Noctichron uh, without the tubes. And here we have with the 10mm and here we have with the 16mm and here we have with both. So that's 26mm. Uh, and yeah, one final thing, I'll close the aperture right down so you get an idea of a kind of possible depth of field but obviously I've had to boost the um, ISO up quite a lot and lose a bit of image quality with this because I've stopped the um, I've stopped the aperture right down to give us a bit more depth of field for this one so yeah there you go I um, hope that was useful guys um, yeah I, I, I think these are pretty good they're pretty you know you could easily save yourself a bunch of money and make your own quite uh, simply um, but then they wouldn't have the you know they wouldn't have the focusing and they wouldn't have the um, uh, the aperture control uh, focusing isn't such a big deal because you mainly focus by uh, moving the camera closer and further away um, with with this um, but control of the aperture is obviously pretty essential and if you've got electronic non-manual lenses then um, yeah it's pretty useful I have to say I, I think these are a good investment I'll definitely I'll definitely think of some interesting projects to use these things for um, anyway hope that was useful guys thanks